because uh, I noticed Carl did this when he walked up there. I go, I think I do that one that Carl does. We all got our nervous habits, right? Uh, the thing that blows me away about uh, the hierarchy is that, like Shane said, you know, about seven, maybe ten of us in this room right now, ten legs in this room, are sought after by pretty much the rest of the country. I mean, people, like especially when these numbers hit, you understand when these a May numbers hit, I mean, people are going to probably start calling Jorge and Scheller and, and ask them to come and speak for them, you know, and that is exciting. Now, we got to be careful that we don't overdo it, okay? you got to really be careful. That's one thing Mike did for, I know me and Hector, right, when it got, like, we were on the speaking circuit every minute of the day, it seemed like, and Mike told us to be careful and to back down, you know. But, man, I, I got a message to us today before I go into what I want to talk about, the, the specific things, is that please... Don't fall prey to familiarity breeds contempt. Please don't do that. I know a lot of you guys think that, you know, you, you see Hector and Jan's lifestyle, and it's all, it's just Hector and Jan. Oh, oh, here's just another one of those Monday morning talks. Please don't let that happen to you. Please don't look at the messenger. Listen to the message. Don't like me. Don't like Hector. Don't like Shane, Gary, any of the people up here speaking. But you better listen to the message. We did not get here by luck. It was not luck that Hector hired me. Do you understand that? It was not luck. He worked at my jewelry store, the one I took over for him. Right? I was a supervisor of the company. I was grieved when Hector left. You know the story, right? And he came back because he was doing a 32% contract and worked, worked part-time when he was brand new in A.L. Williams. And I remember thinking, I go, God, he's so much better. He was good when he was there. I went, God, he's so much better. He took a guy that came in to spend 200 bucks. The guy walked out spending two grand. I said, he's so smooth. And then he was so positive and excited. Folks, that stuff never left me. That's how he hired me. There's no luck involved in that. I mean, I thought about Hector all the time. Jim Hoff and I used to talk about him. Every little rumor I heard, right, Jim? We're on next day. We're, next time I saw you, we're playing golf. I go, did you hear about Hector? Just bought that red Mercedes. And, man, I heard he's saying every time I talk to him, he's happy. See, you guys got to understand that if you try to hire somebody today, they're never going to forget you. See, you think if you don't hire him today, it's over. Like, that's it. I, this guy, I oh, never forget him. You plant a seed of positive, excited, you're going somewhere, man, you should, you're crazy if you don't follow me. That's how he hired me. Now, I'm sick and tired of these people going, well, Lamar, because he's got Susie. Yeah, why quit? He still makes 50 grand a month. If our entire organization quit, he still makes 50 grand a month. Really needs me, right? All we've done is enhance each other's lives and made us both. He's made me bigger. I mean, you think I'm making 62 grand? And part of it's because of him. You understand? His thinking in my life. There is no such thing as luck. Now I start this off because, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I don't know if this is God-given or developed, but I'm a really, really sensitive person. <clears throat> and I sense some of you when Hector's talking, and you know, and, or, and I know I sense it for my team when I'm talking, and a lot of you are going, nah, that's just Rick. Listen, you better clear your head in that area and listen to these messages and quit thinking about my divorce. Do you hear me? See how quiet you got in here? You better quit thinking about my personal life, my problems, and you better start. You're here to win in business, folks. You don't have to like me. This is not a popularity contest. You understand that? A lot of you suffer some very gravely from that. And you better scrap it in your life very quickly. You understand that? This is B-U-S-I-N-E-S-S. -S. This is not popularity. Okay? That said, now, now listen to what we got to say, because I'm about to teach you how to build a base shop. How many people want a, a built base shop? Yeah. See, Dennis Scheller's scared to death right now. He'll admit it. Too bad he's not here to defend himself. I'm not going to put him down. He told me this first thing last night. He's scared to death that his $55,000 base shop is not a built base shop. Because he's afraid he wrote too many sales and it was too much big premium. And he's right. See, my measly 32 grand is built. You understand? I'm not wondering now in June, oh God, am I going to do 32? 
Oh, jeez. See, it's built to 32. I'm wondering if I'm going to do 40, not 32. Which ones are you wondering about? Some of you are wondering if you're going to do 5. And you might have done 15 last month. Because it's not built. It was premium that came from the, the rafters or somewhere, right? So we're going to talk about building a base shop chain. One that you know that in the last, the worst, now the worst case scenario, because you're recruiting and then you keep it up, the worst case scenario, Shane should do 65, 70 grand this month. If he has a bad month, that's built. Hector's going, yeah, well, I know I'll do 40. I'm just wondering if I can get it to 50 to 60. That's a built base shop. And that comes in levels, and we'll talk about that, okay? But before I get started, I wanted to just give a, a little, uh, a little uh, praise here. We did about what I, what my calculations are, and I went pretty, pretty low on everybody's estimate. I think we did about 421 or 425 on the, you know, I don't know if that'll get on the computer. My biggest month was 387. And I just want to tell you guys in my hierarchy, you know, that you guys are unbelievable. I am so excited to be a part of you. You have no idea. And I just want you guys to know that from the stage today, that, you know, my premium is you. Our success is you, and you know, my 62 or 4 grand or whatever I made this month is you. And I just want to let you know, like Hector said, we don't even know what we're doing yet. We're trying to figure it out, but we will figure it out. I'm going to work on figuring it out. Gary, you're working on figuring it out. Mark and Sue work on figuring it out every day, right? <coughs> we're going to work on that, right, Rosa? Right. See? We're going to figure this thing out. And I'm going to tell you one thing. So the rest of the Lamar hierarchy can count on us to keep moving up. Okay? So I just wanted to praise you guys for that. Okay, now, I am a very sick man, huh? I do have, I do have a, some guts, I think. <laughs> but I really need to say that because I see a lot of your faces, and I see a lot of you guys taking things and looking at people and judging people for other things than other than what they're doing here today. This is a business meeting. Okay, so let's just look at it like that and get something out of it, okay? Because I know that's very hard to do, but it's we got to do it. So now we're going to get down here. It's called Building a Base Shop. There's a little page that Hector gave you in there. And I got six things there. And number one is the most important. That's why it's number one. It's very simple, three words. It says, starts with you. Now, let me just put down, let me just read to you what I wrote. Do you want it? And then I guess what I put right after that? Yeah, right. You know, not just yeah, right. Yeah, right. You don't want a base shop. A lot of you don't want a base shop. Big base shop. You know how I know that? Because you don't have one. All I know about a human being is they get whatever they want. If they want it bad enough, they will get it, especially when you're around these people. So, it starts with you. Now, this weekend is designed to soul search. That's what they're designed for. See, today you're going to go home, now you're going to get ready, and we're going to come, and you're going to get your butt burned, most of, most of you, because you're not going to get an award. Right? My butt is flaming right now, by the way. Because I've got beat by eight people in this room in a big shop, probably, that, I don't know, maybe ten, eight, ten people. Do you think I'm excited about that? Do you think this thing's about 64 grand a month or 62 grand a month for me? I understand now I'm going to make money. I've been making money for five years now. I made money at William Pitt. This ain't about the money to me. It's about winning and playing. And I am getting beat up. So I understand the butts of playing. But just it, it's good because it's making me check out my, where, where, where do I want to do? Do I want to build a big base shop again? The days of art, yeah, yeah, I was doing 60, I did 60 grand two months in a row before August of 89, and then whoop, they went away. So I can't live on that anymore. Hector was doing 65, 80, 75 every month. All of a sudden, he's at 12 grand in January, you know. He's got these things called SRMs, about 90 of them around him now, you know, right? You see? So you hear Hector still going, yeah, why wouldn't have gotten plus, you know? He's back in the 40s and 50s again, so we got to build a base shop, and it starts with me, right? See, Jim, your base shop is your base shop. All right, Kevin? You want a big base shop? Just, just check yourself. 
Do you really, really want a big face shot? It isn't just good enough to nod your head and weave. You understand that, Leroy? It's not good enough to do that. When Rick asks you, or Hector asks you, do you really want it? Oh yeah, man, I mean, that isn't it. It's in here. A big base shop is in here, folks. It's not in here. It's not in this ability to do that. It's not that. It's in the soul and the heart. Do you really want a big base shop? I want one so bad I can taste it. And let me tell you why. I, I, I don't care. I'm not afraid to say this. You want to know why I have one a big base shop? Because if I get a $100,000 base shop, all my RBPs can quit and I'll still win. And you have no idea how much that excites me. See? I want such a big base shop that my entire budget is met every single month plus save about five to ten grand, which is what I'd be able to do on a hundred grand base. Right? And then all my RBPs, oh, I can't get it going. Hey man, how's it going, man? He said this. Okay, so anyway, anyway, nice seeing you. I gotta get over here. Bye. And I don't like Tuesday night. Why can't we be on Thursday night? And I want to be on Saturday night. I don't like the slides. I want to be over here. Hey man, this is what I'm talking about. I got a big face shop. I don't need you. Why don't you get a job? Okay? That's my dream. I'm being honest with you. I want a hundred grand face shop. So when Gary and Pat quit, and somebody calls me up and says, "Did you hear about Gary and Pat?" I go, "Yeah, it doesn't matter. I got a hundred grand face shop." Jim Hopper, I heard he's back doing vet business again. Yeah, that's okay. I got a hundred grand base shop. Hector quit. Did you hear Hector retired? Max, my eyes. Okay, I got a hundred grand base shop. Everything wiped out. All problems negative. Nothing is more exciting than the base shop. Nothing. You got thirty percent people more pumped up than SVPs in this company, right, Shane? Thirty percent. People more pumped up than NSDs in this company. Nothing is more fun than a base shop. You can't hire a grand base shop. It's all right, right? How do you get a hundred grand base shop? Number two, <laughs> recruit, recruit, recruit. The three most important things of the business. Now, the way I built a $60,000, $70,000 base shop is it took me three years to do it. First of all, you aren't going to get it overnight. Okay, now the thing that's nice though with these guidelines, I think a 60, 70, 80,000 dollar base shop is going to take a little less time because no more premature promotions is what I always call them. Now we used to joke about it. Remember we used to make jokes about it back three, four years ago that one of these days you're going to be able to sign up and we just make you an RVP. It was almost like that. <laughs> we made not an RVP but an RM, huh? What was it? They signed up, turned in three hiring packs, and they were at 70%. Then there was the one month special where they did a $500 sale, and we gave them an RM contract. We used to joke about that. Like when, when he made it like you only had to hire nine wide instead of 30 wide, we used to go, boy, one of these days are going to give it away. We never thought it would get that bad. Well, see, today with these guidelines, man, you're safe. Derek, you're safe. Go nuts, man. Just go out there and go nuts because nothing's going to be taken away from you. You understand that? Mike and Hector and I and some of the bigger leaders, Shane and Rusty, like you all, we're making the guidelines now. And we understand that nothing great comes easy, so there's not going to be any more easy guidelines. So what do you do about recruiting now? Everybody, you know what though? I know we want to recruit. But listen folks, there's a word. It's a kind of a long word, but we've all heard it. And, and you guys hear me okay? Yeah. It's called rejection. It kills our recruiting. I just got a couple little theories on rejection that we really need. I'm going to deal with this more in that, that little book I've been reading, man. That, God, we have such a good book. But listen, if they don't want to do this business, say thank you and go on. You should have three lists. You should have a new list of people you haven't talked to yet. You should have a list of people that are kind of on the edge. You know, you already talked to them and they just haven't done it yet. Like, what was that guy's name you were mentioning to me? You talked to him a couple times? Jose or Rudy or... No, no. The guy you just hired. Oh, Roger. Roger, yeah. That kind of guy that you've talked to four or five times. Those guys. There should be a list of those people. Then there should be the Rick Susie list that Hector gave. Hector went and built. It was an RVP when he hired me. Understand? I was one of those, yeah, I'll call him every two or three months and I'll just go win and I'll burn his butt. He'll hear about me. 
You got that list going too, right? Like your brother Leroy? He, right? You are going to hire him to use my house. Forget it. Quit trying to hire people when you aren't winning some of these 50, 60 grand a year guys. Hector did not hire me till he won, and that's the way it goes. I am not giving up 70 grand a year with P brain. I have P brain thinking five years ago. Do you understand that? Just, so, just like all the people you're trying to hire right now, Ted. They make 50 grand a year, and that's all they see. That's P brain thinking. <laughs> and you're trying to hire them making 30 grand a year. You're crazy. You got to go win today. And the way you do that is you recruit your brains out. The way you recruit your brains out is you take major rejection and laugh about it. If they don't want to do it, so what? Go get another one. They don't want to do it, Bill. What do you care? <laughs> I never see failure as failure, only as a chance to improve my sense of humor. Now, Hopkins didn't write that in there for his health. He wrote that in there for you to laugh about. So Monday morning, you guys all get back. You're on 10 appointments, Curtis Cooper. So what if they all say no? You go on 10, 15 more on Tuesday. They say no, so what? You'll find Gary Carnegie driving a medic truck. I'll find Leroy hanging out at Xerox after 10 years being paid 28 grand a year. I'll go to Lucky's or Vons or whichever one Gary worked at, Vons, right? He's hanging out in the managing a department, and I like this guy. He looks like a real winner, wants an athlete-looking guy. I'll find him and start talking to him, and he says, no, I'll go to another department. And go, poor guy, he'll be spraying that crap for the rest of his life. Look at him over there spraying that fruit. <laughs> what a poor soul. I'm out here on my own business. Come and go as I please. He's got to stand here 13 hours a day spraying fruit. <laughs> sense of humor. No rejection when you have a sense of humor. You guys take this crap too personal. You take it too personal. They're not saying no to you. I told Debbie the other day, I said, you know what? On the sales, one of the things that made me successful on sales is that all their faces they made, I never once took those faces personal. You know, like when you just said, and did you know that you lost the savings when you died? And out came a switchblade, and they're ready to kill somebody and light the house on fire and take a machine gun out and go running up and down the street. You ever see those faces? Like, Right? They do all that kind of stuff. You know, and you know what you guys go, oh God, I shouldn't have done that. Look what I've done. It made them angry. Oh no. I used to just go, yeah, ain't that something they did that to us, man? Isn't that something? Yeah, I know. Get pissed. I was too. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I know. Well, I don't want to do nothing. I don't even want to buy from you. I don't want to do Remember all that crap they do that to us all? I go, listen, I understand you're angry. That's why I'm here today. See, I never took anything personal. That's how I maintain the attitude all the time. See? And I walk them through it, let them be angry, let them be pissed, a lot of nodding. And then all of a sudden they calm down, get them a drink, right? Here, have a drink of my iced tea, you know? Whatever, calm down, we're here to win. I know you're pissed, but it's over. Now let's go on. That's the same way you do re recruiting. If they say no, no personal. Don't go, gee, no. that must be the way I'm dressed, you know? Uh, I'm blue, oh, I'm green, oh, I'm woman, oh, I'm short, oh, I'm tall. That's what you guys do with this business. Do you understand that? You're taking all that crap personal. Stop it. That's not why they're... Hector is one of my best friends. See he, see, he understood that the reason that I was not saying no was not him. That's what gave him the ability to keep trying to hire me when Jan kept telling him not to. You're crazy, man. He's making good money. He's a suit. You'll never hire him. See, she goes, yeah, I'll wear him down. See? Because he never took it personal. <coughs> the guy never gave him any reason to. Well, I don't want to do the business with you because, uh, you know, because it's you, Hector, you know, to be honest with you. And he still would have probably just flipped me off and went on anyway. He did say that, right? Because he understood it. Okay? One last thing I want to tell you about recruit, recruit, recruit. You gotta talk to a lot of people and you gotta work referrals. One of Hector's best things, I don't know if you still talk about it this year. Hey look, I know you're not interested, but maybe you know somebody that's interested in making three or four grand a month. I know you're really busy, you know. I know you wouldn't be interested, but maybe you have some friends that could really use that extra three or four grand a month. See, be creative with people, get referrals. And the other thing too is I want you to remember something. You know, you've all heard these adages, but you don't live them. That's the problem. There's too many talks we give and you write this stuff down, but you don't live it. 
Reggie Jackson is a very wealthy man. And I don't know the exact number. I kind of think it's almost triple or something like that. He struck out three times more than he hit a home run. I think he struck out like 1,500 times in his time and he hit 500 some home runs. Which one is he wealthy on? Oh, really? Well, I made $70,000 a year running jewelry stores and I took 45 no's a day. And I got five yeses. And some of those yeses were for 1995 little diamond earrings. Five yeses a day, and I got paid 70 grand in 1986. Broadway managers, big department store managers don't make that kind of money today. And I found out that as long as I took that rejection, I could make that kind of money in a stupid retail jewelry business. It's the same thing Hector found out. Hector got paid 55 grand in 1983 at 25 years old. 55 grand in a retail jewelry store. You know why? He just walked up to people all day. Hi, can I help you? Hey, yeah, how you doing today? I don't look at that. Sorry, right. hey, how's it going? All right. oh, okay, you just passed through. No problem. Hey, look, I'm here. If you need me, here, go 50 times a day. And then taught a bunch of other guys to do it. See? Now, which one did he get paid for? The 45 that walked down on him and went, can I just look here? Is that all right? You know, we're just kind of passing through it. You got to jump on me right here? Why didn't you just say, oh, no, thanks for asking. They like this does scary, you understand that? Some people would just go, oh, sorry, you know, help yourself. You know, and you, right? I, you're talking every day, 45 of them. What did you learn off of that after about six months? If you stayed there past six months, if you could take that, you just learn like that was a part of the game. Like Reggie learned this right now was. He just walked back to the bench, didn't he? Said, that's okay, man. Next time, all I got to do is just catch it. Oh, if I catch it, the stand. Oh, man. Woo. Strawberry hit a three-run home run. almost broke the upper deck with it the other night. Yep. Hadn't hit a home run since he'd been with the Dodgers. The fans are standing ovation. Right? Oh, uh, he hasn't hit a home run for 30 games or something there. 20 games at Dodgers Stadium. Oh, they forgot about all that. Do you notice that? Fan, all of a sudden, boo, boo. One stinking home run, all the other 20 games he hasn't hit one. Never happened. Never happened. We went Sunday night, he struck out twice, looked in, like he never played baseball before, right? <laughs> I certainly forgave him for that night, the next night. <laughs> watching that on, just to watch him hit one of those deals. Well, there you go. One corner game, one sheller, one McCrumman, turn your life around, huh? See? So strike out all day. That's how you recruit. Now, here's some important stuff. Now, we're going to get into some of the meat of the things we got to do. i got about 15, 20 minutes here. Okay. Anyway, first team, second team, third team. Very, very important. Who's on these teams? First team are your people, not your RMs, are the doers. Okay, first of all, you got to come to every meeting to be on my first team. And if you miss, I want to know the right reason. If there isn't a good reason, you're, you're meeting on my second team. I have no use for meeting missers. None. I'm sorry. That's the way it goes. It's a tough world, isn't it? If life was easy, I would be easy. Right? But it's not, so I'm not. And neither is cash value competition, are they? Hmm? Are they easy on us? Right? You like the Primerica article on Sandy and the Forbes? Were they nice to us there? Well, then I'm not nice either, Robbie. You understand that? I won't be nice either. See? We'll be fair and we won't be nasty, but we don't need to be so soft and sissy-like that you know, it ruins your business. You need to have a tough side to you. And you've got to learn the art of being tough without making people feel like crap because you never need to make people feel like that. Never. They don't know they're on the first team, second team, or third team. <laughs> you know what? I just go, hey, you know, did you know you're on my third team, by the way? I don't, <laughs> I don't give this talk on a Saturday morning. This is a leadership retreat here. You know, I heard one of you guys tell me about your ignore theory or your purge theory, right? And hopefully I straighten that up with you. You don't let anybody know you're purging them. <laughs> you're purging them, not you. Don't purge them physically. It's all mental. Right? See, you've got to be careful about this stuff. Now, who's on the second team? 
The second team are those people that write a sale once in a while and come to meetings once in a while. And the third teamers, as you look at number six, that's who we're going to talk about. The third teamers are those, you ain't seen them in months, you call them up every month or so, they're going, I'm still in, I haven't quit yet, I'm still there. Okay, now, number four, and now let's go right through number three. We don't need to spend a lot of time on first team. You guys know who first team, second You guys know that, right? Now, here's number four. Here's where everybody's dying. You know, I hear Shane's talking, my butt's burning. But you know what I know? It's that I, it's okay, I don't have a $70,000 pay shop. But you know what, Shane? I got enough people to do a hundred. <laughs> and that's what's the problem with you guys. You look at all these people, you go, I got 27 people in my op meeting the other night. Yeah, but how many of them are on the first team? Yeah. Right? That's where the premium comes from, the first team. When a second team or ask Pat, when I walk in and Pat, I go, I go, what? what? <laughs> There's a sale, somebody walked in, I haven't seen them in months, right? How oh, Pat, I go, what? That work? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd that come from? Huh? What's his name? Did that Marty the other day with a forty dollars sale? I went, oh my! This thing's unbelievable. A guy that's been like, uh, I don't even know if he's in the country. You know, <laughs> walks in with a forty dollars sale. You think he was in my goal? No. I want to, my goal's forty grand this month. You think that that guy's in my goal? I'm going. I know I can get two from him, boy. He walked in three months ago with one. He'll come in with two. He'll pop in with that one sixty-six a month any day now. Look, here's my hierarchy tree. His name's on there. This is funny, and I make it corny so you remember. But this is your problem, Mark and Sue. You got too many bodies hanging around you. They ain't players. This is what. Business, not church. People can hang around church. That's acceptable there. You don't hang around the business. You understand that? You don't want to play, then that's fine. They're still welcome to come to the meetings, but you don't have any time for that, Sal. you got broke parents, broke in-laws, and three kids, and third teamers are just nice people. But they ain't players. See, I mean, Irving Thomas, you guys don't even know who that is unless you're an avid Laker, Laker fan, right? He's a nice guy, isn't he? But he ain't guarding Jordan Sunday. <laughs> you understand, Kevin? There's our problem again. But Irving's a nice guy. Can't they let him guard Michael for a minute on national TV? No. <laughs> no, it's about big time business winning an NBA championship, isn't it? And Irving Thomas has not paid a price yet to guard Michael Jordan. Just like your people that do nothing have not paid a price to get your attention. You are a valuable commodity in this country. You are a regional vice president with a 103% contract and you have limited time and it's only for first teamers. You better divide your base shop up Monday. Or you will never beat some of these big legs. Never, never, never. If you're looking at your hierarchy tree and going, well, I got, I got Daryl. Daryl? Daryl's been here four months, hasn't written a training sale. He ain't got Daryl. He's got a name on a hierarchy tree. See? So Jim Wawak, my best RM, on this deal, he's making your goals this month. Is Daryl in your goals? No. See, when you see Daryl to me, hi Daryl, how you doing? How you going? How's it going? How's wife? Well, we'll get that to later, but this is very important. I can deal with this for the next 20 minutes. Goal setting and proper confession. My butt's burned by Shane, Hector, Sandy, Scheller, Gary, all beat me this month, right? So let me be real stupid. Call an RM meeting, June, right, new month. And tell Jim Wawak if he doesn't do 25 grand, forget communicating with me. And call another RM that does five, you forget it. If you guys don't do this, beat the crap out of them, right? Because I can't get my butt burned anymore. And then I just alienate myself. Instead, what I'm going to do is that long term, see Shane's going to get tired. I understand that, right? He'll lose his focus again, and I'll go blowing right by him again, right? That doesn't make him big, nothing will. <laughs> But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a goal for like 40 grand, Gary. 
Just like you're about the same size I am right now. You're just crazy. I know your butt's burning too. You're crazy to go for 55 or 60. See, everybody says, shoot for the Mars and hit the moon. Well, that's great, but not all the time. It's a long-term business, Sal. You don't do that every month. It was nice in the bid contest, but man, you can't spend your people. You know, you can't tell Magic to play 48 minutes every single game we need you. Magic can't come off the floor. By game four, he's history. And if they were up 3-0, they could have a shot to lose the last four with him on the bench, right? From exhaustion. You don't spend your people. So I'm going for 40. You know why? Because that's a proper goal. And then I'm going to use proper confession. See? Proper confession. That's very, you better be careful what you say. Because if you overshoot and then you don't build up, you don't meet up to that all the time, you feel like crap all the time. I do 39,000 and you did five last month. Then you do nine, which is a great jump over five, but you feel like crap because you told everybody you were going to do 39. So please be careful with the competition and, and our zeal, like especially after these deals, right? We're coming out of here like, ugh, <laughs> right? We're coming out of you know, and I know you want to play with the big boys, but relax. You're a long-term. You're here. You stayed at another job 17 years. Pat, right? You've been at a job 18. You understand this is long. We got it. Don't worry. You'll take your time. Don't go saying I'm going to do 50. Then you do 23, which would be your all-time best. But you feel like crap because you mouthed off and said 50. Now, for somebody doing 18 last month like they did, to say 25, totally acceptable. Right? I mean, they are, it, obviously, if they did 18, if things clicked a little bit better, a little maybe a little higher, so learn, learn to sell better, face them out. Hey, 20, if you could have done 25 with 100,000 more on each sale, right? You're going to get your people to run your brand new code numbers out there. So that's proper, huh? I would even go as far as say shooting for 30 is proper. But see, 40, 35, 45 on an 18,000 prior month, that's like me saying I'm going to go beat Nicholas. You understand? I couldn't beat Nicholas's cats. <laughs> see, it's improper confession. Okay, now number five. Is this stuff helping you guys at all? Yeah. Okay. Now, are you going to do this stuff, though? Yeah. That's the key. All right? Confronting the troops. Huh? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, they are going to do it. You guys are studs, man. We have gotten so good at, at some of this stuff. Confronting the troops. Man, alive. I should have Mark and Sue come up here and talk to you about how much I talk to them about this, huh? Is this important or what? Let me just tell you something. If somebody was writing sales and hiring people and then they stopped doing that, there is an open wound. Don't you understand that yet? You don't just go to one of your best people all of a sudden and stop. Like Jim Wawak, I don't know, have you missed a meeting since you've been around here? Only, only once, I think, when you were out of town. Which, you know, when he's out of town, he couldn't come, right? Now, all of a sudden, Jim, Chris, stops coming. Oh, wait, where, 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 where's Jim? Now, what, what do you think I'm going to do there? Excuse me, Jim, Rick, what, I, I'm lost. Uh, what happened Saturday? Ah, oh, yeah, Bonnie, you know, we're pregnant. Bonnie wasn't feeling good. Bonnie, if she didn't feel good, would make Jim go to the meeting. Right, Bonnie? She's into this thing, too, see? Now, that's not right, either. Don't you got to be in tune with your people. Watch the tendencies. Wait, wait, he's Jim blaming it on Bonnie. Bonnie kicks his butt to get going up. Wait a minute. Something's wrong here. Don't you guys remember Colombo? He's one of my all-time heroes. How did he find the crook? Because he went and saw the suspects and checked out their life that day. And if their life was off schedule from the life prior for the last 30 years or three weeks or months, they went to the right, they went down, they, when they left their driveway, they always went right to work. That day, they took the left. Now, wait a second. Remember, he went, uh-uh. Can I just one more question? <laughs> Something's wrong there. You don't go right four months in a row, then on the day of the murder, you go on the left. You don't miss, never miss a meeting and then never blame your wife for anything and then one day I call you and all of a sudden you go, ah, she didn't feel good and uh, uh, there's something wrong and you better learn to confront them. Jim, hang on a second, man. You, you understand, I win if you win. You remember that? You understand that? 
I can't help you win here if you what's wrong? I hate your guts, Rick. Great. At least he told me. The real no. The real reason. I don't care what it is, Gary. You got goofy hair. I don't like the fact that you uh, misspell words on the overhead. I hate the slides. I hate the meeting. I can't stand Ed Chavez. I hate you. I don't care what it is. I want to know what is wrong with one of my first teamers before he ends up on the third team. That is how you build a big shot. See? All the time, finding out real reasons so that you can put them on a team so you don't make an improper goal. All the time. You know? Same thing with recruiting, huh? I love it. Looks good to me. Sounds great. <laughs> how many times have you heard that? Interesting. That's a beautiful word. Interesting. Very interesting to Excuse me a second. What, what, is, what is it really? Come on. You see this thing, you need it, you're broke. Can you be honest with me? Could you help me out? Which, by the way, when you're confronting the troops, would you please use that word? Look, you know how serious I am about this business, right? Chris, I always have considered you one of my main guys. Could, could you help me out? I mean, I'm confused. You don't come around to the meetings anymore. I haven't seen you in two months. You didn't go to the retreat. Could you just help me out? I mean, what's really bothering you? You know, that kind of talk. You don't put them down going, hey, you scumbag. I know you haven't been around for two weeks. What the hell are you doing, huh? What are you, a lazy bum, huh? Yeah, you'll get a lot of help from them there, huh? They'll be real honest with you. They'll hang up on you. You'll be nice to them and caring about them. See, confronting might be the wrong word. Do you know that? I don't want you guys to get an, uh, an opinion like, all right, I'm confronting the truth, man. Right? No, no, no. That co confrontation means that, that eerie feeling you get in your gut, you know, that, that minute before you know you're going to, all right, got to call him up, man, and ask him that question. Okay, that's what con confrontation means. That's why I use the word. It's not a negative word. It's just confronting. You can be real kind and gentle with people when you confront. I mean, when Hector, one of the, Hector never really had to discipline me much, you know, or to change my thinking. But there was one time, you know, that I was being real negative, and, and George and Dennis were sitting outside my office, man. They were 20 and 21 years old, trying to work their brains out, cold calling all over the Riverside and LA County, coming in. Hector had them all positive, and man, they'd be listening to me, and I'd be bad mouthing Milico. And Hector gave me a nice, you know, rip, you know, just chill out on that, man. We'll work it out, man. Don't worry. Milico won't stop you from where you're going. I know you're right. I know. So I did it again. I just wouldn't stop it, man. If you decline somebody or something, I'd go, man, I drove an hour each way for the sale, man. These people are healthy, right? You know, this is crazy. And George and Dennis, right, sitting right there going, man, You know, because they looked up to me and stuff, right? So Hector calls me in the office. He didn't make me feel bad. He didn't, like, talk to me like a boss. He said, Rick, man, I don't know what to tell you, but you're going to lose if you keep this up, man. I mean, you're affecting my guys, man. Could you just chill out? Because I really, I mean, I, I know you're looking for your own office and stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll have to ask you to get your own office because I can't have you doing that to my guys. Now, that is that confronting? Yeah. Huh? Just like Shane said, look, buddy, I'm, you're my best dude. But sorry, I can't have you be negative, bro. Don't you see the art of that? It's an art. Get good at it. It make your life way easier, folks. It is joy when you get good at it. Excuse me, I just need to ask you, you know, could you help me out? I really need you to help me right now. I'm frustrated right now. Can't you see it? Could you just give me a hand on something? Well, yeah, what? What? You know, that's how they get. You know, I always use that all the time. I go, man, if... Especially one of the gals, right? Or Julie here with her baby comes walking down the steps and falls down. Thirty-seven thousand. This whole room would run over there to help her, wouldn't we? We got help all over us. It helps in our soul so bad. We want to help people. We see someone hurt and we stop and help. And you know, somebody like his brother, Shane's brother, got all messed up. Man, Shane was there. Went to help, help. Get good at that word. Can you help me out? Could you just let me, you know, just can you help me? I'm, can you see I'm frustrated? Admit to them that you're bummed a little bit. Don't be afraid to wear your feelings on your sleeve, folks. 
Okay? Kind of drier than the water. Okay? I just want to get a little wet here before I talk to you about this last one. Because you know what? We're talking about some major. Listen up, everybody. I know it's late. You're thinking about the food tonight and stuff like that. Listen up. Major butchering is going on in this area right here, number six. Major butchering by this entire hierarchy. The ignore theory does not mean the mean theory. As a matter of fact, it's the direct opposite of it. It's the nicer than pumpkin pie theory. But it just means one thing. You never talk to them about Primerica Financial Services. Get the discipline. I talked, did, I have, didn't talk to John Carson for two months, started doing something, talked to him for a month. You do not see me talking to him now, do you? And I will never talk to him again about Primerica. I asked him how his Memorial Day trip was, that he shouldn't have gone on, but he did. I asked him how the girls are doing, how's Deb doing, when Deb comes and John does it, how's John doing? I don't say, did you write a sale? What's wrong with you? Did you and show him all my distress because Hector beat me by two grand when he didn't write a sale when I counted on him to write one. You understand that? Even when you've got a contest or whatever, you cannot blow this theory. Because if you start paying attention to people in this business that aren't doing anything, they will continue to not do anything. Absolute, 1,000% pure science. Taught to me by Hector Lamarck. Taught to him by Mike Sharp and his psychology training. Children, right? Now, Debbie and I will never forget, we took Eric to the Newport little ride thing down there, the Newport thing down there. He went on, a, we were with her sister, he went on a merry-go-round, and when he came around, he went, and I mean, not just us, but about five other people, it looked so funny that everybody laughed. So guess what he did? Every single time he came around, you imagine how boring he got? Right? Every time, every single time. Now, that's exactly what your people, we are all children, just older. Ask them some questions about, how, was I bad at that? Now, do I have a right to tell these people that? He worked on me so hard about this theory. Because I used to think my power would get it, and I'd drive him, and I'm like, oh, he's going to write a sale! <laughs> Come on! You know, I thought that, you know, it didn't work. It worked, but it didn't work. You understand? It, it turned him off. And I, Rosa, will attest to this, because Rosa's only in this deal two and a half months, uh, two and a half years, right? Not even. And up to almost a year and a half ago, up into this thing five years, I was still bad at it and bugging you too much, huh, Rosa? Pushing you too much. Instead, I should have just been going, hey, man, oh, great, you wrote another one? Great. Listen, Rosa, you got to be the top RM. You got to end. You got to end. You know? You can beat up a group like that. You cannot drive an individual. You can have, you know how we have our retreats coming up? We all got contests going. You can have your team meeting and go Vince Lombardi on them. You understand that? You can go nuts on the team. We got to win. We got to take all the awards. But on the individual attention, be careful. You ignore per person not doing anything. And if they got winner in them, they will go to the top. And if they don't, you're losing them anyway. You can't keep a loser. You understand that? You don't want to keep a loser. Anyway, that's the that's how to build a base shop. I hope it helps you. Um, I just want to just want to tell you some things here before I leave here. Uh, like I said, I already praised my hierarchy. But if uh, you don't have any other thing to do, Hector, I'd like to introduce you for your talk, unless you want to say something before you talk. Okay. Um, I got a couple theories. You know, I'm whacked out, dude. I understand that. But I, I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> that Not that I'm proud of this, but it is a fact, and let me just impart some of the knowledge from this fact to you. There ain't nobody in this room that has watched more sports and read more sports pages and sports illustrated than me. Okay? You understand that? Nobody. 
I read the entire sports page. I'm so bummed right now. I feel like a junkie without his needle today because I didn't get the paper yet. Because I, I had asked Jim the scores last night, huh? So 8 o'clock this morning. And, and by the way, he goes, okay, now we're treating. we got to make it play. I go, oh, by the way, what the angels do and what they get. He ran down the whole scores to me, right? I had to know. I couldn't go a day without knowing them. I lose track. Oh, who's winning and who's losing? And God forbid if that happened to me. You understand? So the thing that I have gleaned from that, that I have gained from that, bad habit. Or good habit. There's a lot of good to it. Okay? Is I have found out what it takes to win. And I find out why people lose. See? Like Portland... Just went to sleep. One little 12-minute segment, Shane, of an entire eight-month season. One little 12-minute segment with a 12-point lead. The Lakers snapped that thing apart, didn't they? They went 13-0 on in the first three minutes and won the first game, and now Portland's going to watch that game Sunday. Because the difference between winning and losing, you can't even see it. So quit asking me why I'm so friggin' intense. Because I haven't won. The second thing I want to mention to you, more than I haven't won my financial goal, the second thing is, is I don't do this thing all for the money. Yes, we all want to be financially independent. That's one of the goals. But don't you understand that if I don't do this, I don't get to play? I have to go right at the work a job. Now, I have projection fears, too. Everyone does. I just go through those because, like, I know when I come up here and give you guys these talks, I'm going to go, oh, I'm going to turn some people off. They're going to probably get mad at me. Oh, God, they're going to look at me going, oh, here he goes again. Here he goes another one. And rant and rave things. And I, I go through all those feelings, too, right? And then I go, that's okay. i got to do that because if I don't, i got to get a job. Oh, God! <laughs> You'd have to put me away for a month or two. Right, Jim? How many times have I said that to you? Jim, they'd have to admit me. Two months minimum. I'd have to go through therapy before I could go, Hello, sir. Uh, yeah, I got jewelry experience and I ran a marketing service. And Can I work here? It would take me minimum two months of therapy before I could even do that. That's a fear. So see, i got a purpose here. I don't want to work. I want to play. My purpose is to teach you guys to have fun with this thing, to play. And the third thing, that I've learned from watching sports. See, you get the right. First thing is right. Winning and losing, the difference. Playing is fun. Imagine those guys making three million dollars a year to play a sport. We get to play here. And the third thing, as I get off and introduce this man, is leadership is everything. Not a little thing. Not something. Every thing. It's another gut check time. Are you? Are your actions? Are is your leadership? Would you follow you? Where would you follow you? Ask yourself those questions today. Huh? You getting up at eight? McLean and Elvia. You follow Gary? Yeah. Why? Eight to one. What are you doing now, McLean? Eight to one. What do you do, Alvia? Eight to one. Why can you tell them to do it, Gary? Eight to one. Up at eight, bed at one. Even if there's an appointment canceled, call Gary at one o'clock. He's reading a book or something, listening to a tape, watching a tape. He has the right to tell his whole team that forever. What are you doing? Well, we got the best leader, not in California. Not in Primerica Financial Services. This thing's going to sound strong to maybe some of these strangers that are listening here. I don't care. The best business leader in America is sitting right there. And his spouse is as strong as he is. We got him. Scrap the familiarity breeds contempt. I can't even talk right now. I'm so emotional. Scrap it and listen to this man. He's made me wealthy. He's made a couple of you rich, soon to be wealthy. And the rest of you need to follow and get on this team. We have the best leader in America. Let's give him a standing ovation. Heck for the Lord.